The 1930s were a period of rapid rearmament and tank development. Many European nations were focusing on developing and improving their own tank forces, leading to more and more specialized and advanced fighting vehicles. France was not to be left behind, reorganizing part of its defense industry and starting new projects. The need for a new French heavy tank was amplified by the start of the construction of the German Siegfried Line, a defensive wall running across the German border with France vis-à-vis -vis the Maginot Line. This prompted the French Armaments Advisory Council on 4th May 1936 to start a new heavy tank program. The technical requirements for the new tank, named Char de Rupture 1937, were released on 12th November 1936. The Armaments Advisory Council stated the following. A heavy tank, well armored and well armed, suitable for both defensive and offensive purposes in fortified battlefields. The main focus was the armor and armament. In Shah B1 fashion, there were two main armaments, one in the hull and one in a fully rotating turret. The armor was to be able to resist anti-tank cannon fire from as close as 200 meters. In addition, the top speed was requested at 30 km per hour, with a range of 200 km or 10 hours. The total weight was not to exceed 45 tons. In the spring of 1937, three French companies presented their designs, AMX, FCM and ARL. ARL was the only company which had not designed tanks before. In 1935, the Docks de Ruy, originally part of APX, were renamed to Atelier de Construction de Ruy, with the abbreviation ARL after nationalization. It was also then that the design bureau was created. Located in the suburbs of Paris, the workshop became more famous post-war with the construction of the ARL-44, yet participated in the design of many other French tanks. Unlike its competitors, which presented the AMX-37 and FCM-F4, ARL presented three designs simultaneously, the Variant C, Variant S and Variant V. Every version had different turrets, armaments and layouts. It is important to note that blueprints of the rear of the hull do not exist. It is unknown if they were ever made or potentially lost. However, all the existing blueprints are on the armament layout, showing that they were supposed to use the same hull. Ultimately, the engine used and similar details are unknown. All three variants were, speculatively, based on the same hexagonal shaped hull, with large tracks running over side skirts similar to the Shah B1. In addition, all versions had a flamethrower mounted in the hull on the right side to compensate for potential blind spots. The gun used inside the hull was the 75mm APX Howitzer Model 1929. Originally made for the Maginot line as a static defense, it was developed from the infamous model 1897-75mm howitzer. It was later adapted for use in armored fighting vehicles and used in the later ARL V39 prototype. This gun was also used by the other competitors FCM and AMX. The most simple from a mechanical and design perspective out of the three, variant C, was very similar to a Shah B1 BIS. Besides the hull-mounted gun, a one-man turret was mounted on the left side of the hull roof. The turret was very similar to the APX-1 turret on the Somua S-35 and Shah B-1 BIS, however the armor was greatly improved at approximately 100mm all around. Inside the turret, a 47mm SA-35 gun was mounted, the same gun as on the Shah B-1 BIS and Somua S-35. On the Shah B-1 BIS, the muzzle velocity of the SA-35 was 660 to 680 meters per second, with a penetration of 40 millimeters angled at 30 degrees at 400 meters. Variant C carried 106 rounds of ammunition for the 47 millimeter, 98 in the hull and 8 in the turret. It had a crew of 4, 
A driver responsible for driving the tank but also aiming and firing the 75mm gun. Behind him in the hull was the loader of the 75mm gun. In the turret was the commander responsible for commanding the tank, spotting targets, loading and firing the 47mm gun. This was a common feature of French tanks of the period. At the end of the crew compartment a mechanic was seated. Quite common on World War I tanks, this position was archaic by 1937 standards. In practice he would have been in charge of passing ammo up to the commander and fulfilling other smaller tasks. He would have also been in charge of the radio, of unknown type, yet it is likely to have been the ER-53 used on the Shah B-1s. The second design proposed was more complex than the previous and the plans available are even more scarce. The small turret was replaced with a larger Freeman turret. However this increased the crew to 6 men. The turret was casted into a large octagon, still with 100mm thick sides. In contrast to variant C, it was equipped with a 47mm model 1934 gun, which was also designed for use on the Maginot line. It is hard to tell why two different guns were chosen for the different designs. The main turret had a smaller rotating pseudo turret or cupola for the commander. This was equipped with two machine guns, most likely 7.5mm Mach 31s. However, it lost the machine gun mounted parallel to the main gun, like in the variant C. The commander would now stand in this cupola and be able to more effectively scan the environments and engage infantry. As the crew expanded to six men, the layout changed. The turret now had a designated commander, gunner and loader. Meanwhile, inside the tank, the driver, loader and mechanic were the same. The designated gunner and loader would have vastly increased the efficiency of the tank. However, these changes would have made Variant S vastly more expensive compared to Variant C. The most complex and interesting of the three designs was Variant V. The turret was now unmanned and was equipped with a 47mm SA-35, the same as on Variant C, and two 7.5mm Mach machine guns mounted coaxially on each side of the gun. As it was unmanned, it was made much smaller. To aim and fire it, a device was created by Le Feuvre that would allow the commander to aim and fire the guns in the turret, and even the 75mm in the hull from a dome-like casemate to the right of the 47mm turret. To cover up the blind spot that was created by the casemate, an additional 7.5mm machine gun was added facing the rear. The crew was now 5 men. There was a driver, although it is unclear if the 75mm howitzer could also be aimed and fired by both the driver and the commander, and two loaders, one of which was also designated as a mechanic. They shared the task of loading the 47mm and 75mm guns. Despite being unmanned, the turret did not have an autoloader. The technology did not exist in 1937. Rather, the loader was underneath the turret and loaded from there. The commander was located in the dome-shaped casemate and the radio operator was on the right of the tank, inside the side skirt in between the tracks. Version V was a very unorthodox design, clearly being expensive and more complex than the other variants. The ARL-37 would have been extremely expensive no matter what, its undoubtedly large size, thick armor and need for a massive engine would have made this program very expensive, let alone the complex devices needed on the version V. The largest mystery with the ARL designs remains the hull. Since no complete blueprints exist, it is hard to tell how it looked. From the existing blueprints above, we do get a clear image of how the front looked and that it had small leaf spring suspension like many other French tanks of the time. The rear of the hull was never designed as it included the engine, transmission and other parts that did not exist and would be subject to change. Nonetheless, the ARL V39, a tank destroyer built by ARL in 1939, is clearly based on the ARL 37 and is a good clue on how the ARL 37 might have looked like. Yet the ARL V39 was 25 tons lighter 
had only 50 mm of armor and used 190 to 240 horsepower engines, completely different from the heavy tank. The ARL designs and the FCM and AMX proposals all used non-existent engines. The FCM and AMX designs weighed over 50 tons and required two V12 engines of unknown power. Each variant of the ARL proposal tried to fix larger underlying issues. Variant C was the standard French design, akin to the Shah B1 bis. However, the overworked commander and gunner driver would have been a huge drawback, as proven on the B1. Variant S tried to fix this by having a larger Freeman turret, yet the larger turret proved to be very wide and it did not fix the overworked driver issue. Variant V eased out the work for the driver, however now the commander had to aim two guns and still relied on the driver to traverse the tank when aiming the 75mm howitzer. All in all, it proved that multi-gunned tanks were not a good idea. Just like the other competitors' designs, the ARL variants failed. The entire project was deemed too expensive and the tanks could only be produced in small numbers. Logistical and reliability issues might have appeared when building such a large vehicle with engines made from scrap. The weight and size of the ARL variants are unknown, however they most certainly went over the 45 tons mark. A final blow came when the Superior War Council decided on 26 March 1937 that a much smaller, cheaper yet heavily armored tank would be designed instead. This, in turn, went south as well, when the Section for Technical and Armament Studies made a study which showed that a tank fulfilling those criteria was already under development and there would not be a need for a new program. This tank was the Shah G1. The ARL-37 would continue to influence the ARL V-39 self-propelled assault gun and, in February of 1938, the requirements of a heavy breakthrough tank changed. Most importantly, the weight restriction was removed. This led to the development of the ARL-39 and ARL-Tractor-C super heavy tanks.